Welcome back to End Times Prophecy News for the 9 o'clock report. The Russian nuclear bombers perform flyby of the U.S. mainland. From ZeroHedge.com. Let's talk about this. What we have here is political speaking in the, in the sky. That's right. That's what we got. Two Tu-95 Bear long-range nuclear bombers have flown along the coast of Alaska for the second straight day in a row, but this time they were as close as 36 miles from the U.S. mainland. So Putin had them fly a little closer from Zero Hedge. Yesterday we reported that the U.S. Air Force scrambled two F-22 stealth fighters on Monday night to intercept a pair of Russian nuclear-capable bombers, which came as close as 100 miles from Alaska's Kodiak Kodiak Island, Fox reports. This was the first time since President Trump took office that Moscow has sent bombers so close to the U.S. The two Russian 295 pair tactical bombers flew roughly 280 miles southwest of Elmendorf Air Force Base within the air defense identification zone of the United States. The U.S. Air Force promptly scrambled two F-22 stealth fighters and an E-3 airborne early warning plane to intercept the Russian bombers. As we further added, there were no provocations or escalations on either side, and according to the Pentagon official, the interception was conducted in a safe and professional manner as the bombers did not violate U.S. airspace or break international norms. Note, they did not. Now we fast forward 24 hours later when, as Fox reports for the second consecutive day, Russia flew two long-range bombers off the coast of Alaska on Tuesday, this time coming within 36 miles of the mainland while flying north of the Lucian Islands, according to two U.S. officials. So what is Putin saying? Well, he's trying to say, I'm not going to be bluffed. I'm going to call your bluff. Right? Right. And I'm going to move in a little closer to make you nervous. The two nuclear-capable 295H bombers were spotted by U.S. military radar at 5 p.m. local time. However, unlike the previous described incident on Monday night, this time the U.S. Air Force did not scramble any fighter jets. Instead, it launched a single E-3 Sentry early warning aircraft, AWACS, to make sure there were only two Russian bombers flying near Alaska and not other aircraft flying underneath the large bombers. On Monday, the Russian bombers flew within 100 miles of Alaska on Monday night. One day later, they cut the distance to the mainland by two-thirds. U.S. territorial waters extend 12 nautical miles from shore. The Russian bombers took off from air base in Petropavlovsk. Russia and returned five hours later to an air base in Anadyr. Both locations are in eastern Russia, some 1,000 miles away. So I already reported this, but I didn't have much of a comment. So what do I believe is happening here? Well, if you look, what was the second response by Donald Trump or our generals? All they sent the second time was the E-3 Sentry, AWACS, a powerful radar plane. Okay. The first time they sent the E-3 Sentry and two F stealth fighter, F-22 stealth fighters. So what was what was our military saying? Uh, we see your little play game, but we're not worried. The first time we were, now we're not. Even though you came closer, that's sending a message. You don't scare me. And you know what Putin says about that? Darn it. Well, I thought I could scare them a little more. But actually, he got a reverse action, a reverse response. We're not scared. And darn it, I didn't scare them. And you know what? When you don't show fear, what are you showing? Strength. That's right. We're on the A-team now, folks. We don't have the Obama regime. 21st Century Fox just confirmed it. He's out. Bill O'Reilly has officially been fired from Fox News. It was just announced by 21st Century Fox. I already reported this this morning. 
but Fox News did not uh, officially report it. Fox News parent company 21st Century Fox has released a statement announcing that suspended host Bill O'Reilly will not be returning to the network. They never even said he was suspended. He went out on vacation. After a thorough and careful review of, review of the allegations, the company and Bill O'Reilly have agreed that Bill O'Reilly will not be returning to the Fox News channel. And my previous comment, I believe, was spot on. Uh, this is all a false flag on, because, number one, he is the main man uh, defending Trump, and the global elites hate it. As I've said many times, Fox News reports pretty good news, but not all the way. They're not, they're not totally unbiased. They're still left-wing biased a little bit, yes. They're that little in-between news. That's what they are. So, you know, Fox News, I mean, uh, Bill O'Reilly got too good. Started pushing things that were too much truth. And Murdoch, uh, out of hell, the Murdoch brothers or whatever it is, who own, they, uh, they said, no, we're not going to have that. We're not going to have that. You're, you're, you're getting, making too many good points. So you're supporting Trump too much, and he is our problem. So they quietly let him go. And they planted this false flag of another woman saying that sexual allegations, that's all fake. He's had several before. The company paid it off. They, they said they were going to defend him. Now they reneged on it. And what happened just, what, a month ago? We had Judge Napolitano, same thing. Get rid of him because he told the truth about the, the British spying for, for Obama on, on or Obama, uh, you know, telling the British spy agency, GCHQ, I believe they call it, uh, to spy on Donald Trump. And then he was right, so they brought him right back. Why? Because they didn't want to look, lose face. But now they got to get rid of this guy. They got to keep people that don't really do much, like Martha McCallum at nine. And then there's this. There's other woman that could easily outdo her. She's the dark-haired, another Fox lady uh, who's very attractive and used to be a uh, model. Her name is Kim Pirelli or something like that. Uh, you know, top of her class, very smart, Ivy League. Uh, she can, uh, she, I think she graduated uh, cum laude in her class. Uh, she could easily work her way up, but instead, what well, they got people like Martha McCallum doing it, just stands there and goes, uh, doesn't really say much at all. While there's other people who do a far better job. Obviously, they're pushing back the truth. They're acting like they're giving you the truth, but they're not entirely. While the rest of them are, are all totally rogue, you know, MSNBC, CBS, you know, CNN, the rest, they're all totally no good. And then they're attacking, you know, YouTube, as we all know, and Facebook and Google and Twitter throughout the, you know, they're really controlling it. They're trying, but they're going to lose. They have been losing and it's only getting worse. So anyway, Bill O'Reilly's out. Where is he going to go? Big question. Uh, look at this. It's coming from KCRA out of Sacramento. Californication. Amazing. Fox said that Tucker Carlson's show should move to 8 p.m. EDT to replace Bill O'Reilly and that the panel talk show The Five would take Carlson's time slot at 9 p.m. Well, Tucker Carlson's pretty good, but who replaces Tucker? The Five will be replaced at 5 p.m. EDT by a one-hour program hosted by Eric Bowling to debut May 1st. Eric Bowling's pretty good. Special report with Brett Baer will fill the 5 to 7 p.m. time slot. Brett Baer is pretty good, but he doesn't, doesn't ask real powerful questions. The fast-moving story took shape with an April 2nd report in the New York Times that five women had been paid a total of $13 million to keep quiet about unpleasant encounters with O'Reilly, who has denied any wrongdoing. Dozens of his show's 
advertisers fled, even though O'Reilly's viewership increased. O'Reilly has denied wrongdoing. Interesting. Dozens of his shows, advertisers fled. That's the George Soros movement. Same thing happening in YouTube. Even though O'Reilly's viewership increased. The real people that pay for those commercials. That's right. The viewership is what pays for the commercials. Commercial companies pay for viewership. So if there's viewership, they easily pay. That's how it works. If you, if you ain't got no viewership like CNN, crap national news, you can't sell your commercials to them, to the companies. You see how that works? So the disinformation through George Soros and uh, the global elites is stronger than ever right now. Stronger than ever. Yes, Donald Trump is doing a great job even though he has less than half of his cabinet compared to uh, old Bummer did at this time, four months in, almost four months. He's still in, doing a fantastic job with what little he has. But the disinformation, uh, the, the, the lies out of the mainstream media and the, the global elites, stronger than ever. Even though at least one of the harassment cases against O'Reilly dated back more than a decade and was widely reported then, the accumulation of cases outlined in the Times, there's another leftist lying machine, damaged him much more extensively. Figures, huh? It wasn't clear when those stories would end with a group of women demonstrating in front of Fox, Fox's headquarters Tuesday and another woman, a former clerical worker at Fox, calling a harassment hotline and accusing the host of boorish behavior. <clears throat> I'm not going away, said Lisa Bloom, attorney for the latest accuser and another woman who alleges her career stalled because she spurned O'Reilly's advances. Let's see. We have, we have all these leftist attorneys, feminists. Then we have another woman uh, suing him. And it's all alleged. Her career stalled because she spurned O'Reilly's advances. My phone is ringing off the hook. O'Reilly's attorney, Mark Kosowitz, charged that his client was being subjected to a brutal campaign of character assassination and that there is a smear campaign orchestrated by far left organizations bent on destroying O'Reilly for political and financial reasons. I would perceive that Mark Kosowitz has just nipped it in the bud with the truth right there. Conservative personality Glenn Beck, who once lost a job at Fox News Channel because a similar campaign choked his program of paying advertisers, came to O'Reilly's defense of Wednesday, but was it was too late. You need to write and call Fox News Channel today and tell them you can lose your advertisers or you can lose your viewers. Beck said on his radio show, but you have to put some spine back into the Murdoch family and the Fox News Channel board because you are about to lose Bill O'Reilly. O'Reilly's fans aren't likely to be happy about him losing his job, particularly on a controversy set in motion by the Times. His show's viewership increased the week after the story appeared. O'Reilly didn't address it on the air and has sunk since he left for vacation. Potential successors like Dana Perino, Eric Bowling, and Greg Gutfeld have substituted for O'Reilly since he left for vacation, but it will go down. Vatican spokesman Greg Burke confirmed O'Reilly was in the VIP section for the Pope's Wednesday appearance. Burke, a former Fox News correspondent in Rome, denied having facilitated the tickets. Such tickets can be obtained via special request to the papal household from embassies, high-ranking churchmen, or Vatican officials. Francis always swings by the VIP seats at the end of his audience for a quick round of handshakes. A photographer from the Vatican newspaper, El Observator Romano, snapped a photo of Francis reaching out to shake his hand. Interesting that they bring up the Vatican at the end here. Thank you for listening. God bless you. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins.